Hello and welcome back. This tutorial will help you to make your first step into a model analysis. We will do a model analysis on this lawnmower and what is the first step? It's not about the hammer, it's not about the accelerometer, it's about, well, the tool that you need is a pen. It's best practice. And with that pen you go to your object and thinking about the points you want to measure. You don't need millions of points, you just need a few of them to see the motion. For example, I want to see the relation between this point and the other side point here. If they move in the same phase or opposite, opposite or in this way, so then I can guess what the rest is. So I need some points on the structure and that I should mark with a pen. So I make here my first point and give him a number. It's important to divide later on the different measurements. Uh, we think about maybe a one would be a good idea. Actually, yes, it works, but um, I recommend to use higher values, not just a one, maybe a 101. Let's write down 101. And this will be um, 102. So later on, I will remind that all the points which start with a 100 are on the substructure handle. It's easier to organize yourself later then. So this is 101, this is 103, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 and 109. So in total we have 9 points on the substructure handle. Okay, that was the first idea. The next step is the coordinate system of these points has to be defined. Coordinate system, most of the people know there's x, y and z. So they maybe make this error to orientate in the room. They say okay, um, this is x, this is y and this is z. Fine, easy, but then the trouble starts. If I pick up my triaxle accelerometer and put it in here, it's not aligned to my coordinate system. So I need a small chunk in here to make it just fitting. The sensor directions fits to my coordinate system. Okay, that's fine. And when I measure this point, again, I have to move and build something just to align it again. At all points, I'm in trouble to get just the alignment right. Yeah? A lot of waste of time and of energy. It's not necessary. If you step back and watch your object in the first step and say, hey, hold on, this is, this is tilted. Okay, then I should tilt my coordinate system as well to make it easier for me you save a lot of time. So I recommend for this object, this is my x direction, this is my y direction, and that will be my z direction. x, y, and z. It's still triaxial. No? It's still rectangular, but it's orientated on my object. So when I then apply my sensors, it's so simple. This is, oh, it fits perfectly, x, y, and z, oh, x, y, and z, x, y, and z. Wherever I place it, it's just perfectly aligned to my object and to my coordinate system. Saves time. And now I lift you to an advanced level. What about the housing? We also want to measure the motion of the housing. Let's look in there. So what we can do here is, of course, we can apply our accelerometer maybe at this place. And then you have to think about the sensor axis aligning to a coordinate system. It is still an X, Y, Z system. I say, okay, this maybe goes to X direction. This is the Y direction if this is turned over again. And this motion will be the Z direction if it stands like this. I got this one. But what about if the sensor is placed in here on the top position or here on the down position? Then everything is different. Now the sensor has turned over. So that means uh, this, this direction is now the new X1 and that direction is now the Y direction, okay? I can handle that, it's not easy, but I can handle that. But what about the point which is just in between? So this is maybe a degree, 30% changing. It means sinus alpha from that point multiply with, whoa, you go mad. Huh? So what you can do is, of course, uh, then the people come and start again trying put some chunks where just to align my sensor to my coordinate system. But this has to be adapted to all the spots here. You go mad because all the sensors here had different angels. If you feel that, you know I've made something wrong. And again, it's just the step back that you have to make. You step back and watch your object and describe it. Well, I see a circle. <laughs> it's easy to see, but say it. 
the engineer might say, oh, I see a cylinder, whatever. Something that can be described with a radius. In the moment when you know, okay, my object has a radius, forget about x, y, and z rectangular stuff. Then use a polar coordinate system. That's what they made for, okay? Polar coordinate system helps you through that, okay? I explained here. If you look at your object and maybe place your object anywhere, just here, this is the center of your circle. And from that point on, always the R direction, instead of X, we use R for radius, will go through that one. If I measure on that point, it will be plus R. If I measure on the inside, it will be minus R. So this sensor line will be just minus R. And if I place it here, the same sensor line will be minus R. So the channel always stays to be measuring minus R, wherever I place it, without any thinking. At the same moment, this sensor here, which is rectangular to that, will measure the tau, the t, the tangential to the R sensor. So this is my t sensor line. And the finally, we have R, t and z. This goes upwards. So this sensor will always, wherever I place it, this sensor will always measure my z direction. Instead of using x, y and z, we use R, t and z. Just different letters but it helps you so much on some object with a radius. So let's check out how these coordinate system would look like in a model. I've created my model with Artemo Suite from Head Acoustics. This is an affordable program which is easy to use and allows different ways to create a model. So if you're a complete beginner starting from scratch or you already have professional CAD data, here you can set up your model as you like. This will be your base for your data acquisition and the model analysis. As you can see, I've already set up my measurement points and give the correct numbers. 101 till 109 here at the handle. The view of these coordinate systems shows that they are orientated in the room. So I just click on one of them and rotate it so that all the points are perfectly aligned to my substructure. That is the trick. Like explained, for the cylindrical housing, I use a polar coordinate system. So all the points are defined with R, T and Z directions. Here you can see it. R looks always out of the plane, and T is always tangential to this. That's simple. And the cool thing is, you can use both coordinate systems within the same model. So the first step is done. We have to find all the points we want to measure, give them numbers, and a given suitable coordinate system to all of these points. Now we are ready to measure. There are different methods how to acquire impact measurement data. One is the so-called grooving hammer method. The hammer is moving all over the object, which has the advantage you just need a hammer and an accelerometer. Just two channels and you can measure the full object, which is quite nice and so very common. Another method is so-called grooving accelerometer. If you have more sensors, more accelerometers, you might have advantage of using this method. This is explained in the second video. And if you're and if you're confused by all these different hammer tips which come along with an impulse hammer, I make a third video which explains what is the idea behind all these hammer tips and you understand what hammer tip is the right for you. Okay? So if you have any trouble, we get you on the track. If you have the feeling that these kind of acoustic video tutorials help you on the job, please give me a feedback, thumb up or leave a comment so I know that this is the right what you need. And if you want to learn more about Acoustic Engineer's daily work task, subscribe. I have a lot of more information to share which helps you on the job. So stay tuned. See you. Bye.